Well, hello there, and welcome to the second ever EFTA podcast. I am your host once again, Don Allen, as I will always be your host, because I have no one else to help me with this. So, I, uh, wow, I did one back in, I believe, January, and wow, I didn't do anything else in between. I did, uh, I mean, I've done, you know, several video reviews and things like that, but I haven't done any podcasts, and I just figured, you know, what the hell, I have nothing else to do right now, so I'll just go ahead and do a, I don't know, 10, 20, 30... I'll do a 17-hour podcast. Right now, I'll have to switch tapes 17 times because I only have an hour on each one. But um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, how I handle the transition between tapes and things like that. So stick around for the next uh, three-quarters of a day, and uh, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. T- we will make it. We will make it, I promise. Don't give up. Don't give up. We'll make it. Anyway, um, so what's gone on since the last one? Hmm. Well, too much to recount, but let me tell you, the past couple of weeks, I can talk about one big thing in particular, of course, where all the celebrities that have passed away. Um, gosh, it just like steam, like steamrolled, didn't it? I mean, it like just started off really small with uh, Ed McMahon, which you know, Ed McMahon, his death is. I mean, it's not a small thing. It's it's a human dying, but you know, it was he was old, okay, and he had had a full life. And, you know, everyone knew his career and. He had started going downhill in, you know, the past few years with, like, a bankruptcy filing, and his house was being foreclosed on, and, and just different things like that. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I think that he, he would probably have more peace in death than he would have had he continued to live through all of that garbage. But, um, you know, so may he rest in peace, man. That guy had an awesome career. Crazy awesome. Johnny Carson, Star Search, and um, Publishers Clearinghouse. And I guess that's about it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even know what he did before The Tonight Show, but he was on that for 30, 30 years, uh, more than 30 years. That's just insane. One show for a 30-year period, five days a week, just unbelievable. Um, then it was uh, the Farrah Fawcett. Man, talk about a lot of guys' childhoods going down the crapper with that one. I'm telling you, I don't, I'm too young to have remembered her. I, I didn't live through that period where she was big. I was I was born in 1982, so you know Charlie's Angels was already done with and that kind of thing when I was born. Uh, but they would rerun it on TNT when I was a kid. Like you know th- they reran that and they reran Chips, and I would I, I I ended up choosing Chips to watch. And that was on that was always on after Gilligan's Island, which was the reason that I watched Chips was because it was Gilligan's Island was the lead in, and you know that's the brilliant show. And then the Chips was sort of like the oh look something's on while I go. Uh, I don't know. Go, go go get ready for school or whatever I did in that morning. But the uh, the whole point was I didn't watch Charlie's Angels, and I wasn't really familiar with Farrah Fawcett's career. To be perfectly honest with you, I know that she was a model and whatnot. But yeah, she was pretty good looking back in her day, and um, she had the you know the no bra saggy boob thing going, which didn't really appeal to me back when I was a kid. When I was getting into that age, I would see pictures of Farrah Fawcett, and people were like, "Whoa, this is what I was into when I was your age," and I was like. Yeah, I prefer more support, you know, but you know, she was she was definitely pretty, um, and I'm probably understating it. And everyone out there listening right now is like, "What are you a fucking queer? What is wrong with you? How could you think she wasn't the hottest thing alive?" Well, I'm sorry, you know, I just, I I, I was I missed that boat. I'm sorry, um, but then the big one right after Farrah Fawcett, and unfortunately on the same day too, and it stole all of her thunder. I mean, you know. She probably deserved a lot more than she got as far as memorial and, you know, uh, commemoration went. But, man, Michael Jackson, of course, the big the big dog that just passed away, Michael Jackson. I mean, they're still talking about him on, on the news. It's been two and a half weeks. And, you know, he is, I mean, I saw him on Today Show this morning on Saturday. And on Saturday, on the Today Show on Saturday, nobody watches that at all. And they're still talking about Michael Jackson. And... It's just crazy to me because um, he actually had some sort of an impact on me as a child. I was right there growing up right when he got big, you know, and um, he was, I mean, in the mid-80s, that guy was it. I mean, everyone knows how big he was in the 80s, but, um, you know, he was just monstrous back then, and it was crazy. Like, I was such a big fan of him when I was, like, four or five years old. And I don't really know why, because it's just some one of those things, as, as a young boy, he really appealed to you. 
I think because I was going through some sexual frustration. No, I'm just kidding. I'll leave the I'll leave the jokes alone. But really, you know, like I don't I I was just uh, something connected with me, and it was just I was a really big fan of what he was doing back in the day. I think it was Thriller. I remember seeing Thriller for the first time. And that was just incredible to me. Like, just the fact that it was on MTV, and you would see things, you know, like Billy Idol, and you'd see all these other things pass by in two or three minute spurts. And then they would play the shortened version of Thriller, which was still like eight or nine minutes long. And it was just so epic to watch that back in the day. And then they had specials, you know, like on Dateline and things like that back in the day, where like they would show the making of it. And Michael had like this love of horror movies they would talk about and things like that. And I liked horror movies like pretty much from day one. I've loved horror. And it's just, you know, as I just had like we had some things in common. I don't know. It just seemed like a, he seemed like a kid, you know. And um, ultimately that would be one of the things that would be thrown in his face later in life and cause him to, you know, basically have a downfall in his career. But early on in the days when he was young, that wasn't seen as too unnor- you know, as unnormal. Is that a word? As too uh, abnormal. So, um, you know, back in the day, I thought he was awesome. But, of course, as time went on, I got out of that phase, and I didn't like him as much. But uh, I still respect him for what he did for the music industry and what he did for MTV. I mean, that guy changed the face of music back in the day. And he made MTV. I mean, practically, MTV wasn't what it, what it is today. It wouldn't be what it is today. It were not for his videos and his style and, you know, him just coming on and not not giving a crap and just throwing it all on the line, his dancing, his, you know, just he just knew how to entertain. And that was it. And, um, you know, I mean, look at today, the influence that just MTV has. He, he influenced MTV, which in turn influenced our culture today. I mean, just look at the movie industry, the awards, you know, uh, ceremonies that go on today, the, the actors, the things that are just popular in pop culture now. I mean, they're all centered around you know, MTV from the 80s and 90s, like, basically forming this generation of kids that grew up into what we have today that run everything. So, you know, it's just it's just startling when you see the impact that this guy had on everything. And that's why he's been commemorated the way he has over the past couple of weeks. Not so much, you know, that he's any more special as a person or anything. It's just that the impact he had was just monstrous and pretty much uncomparable to anyone else. Um... But yeah, I, I'm, you know, I just, um, I don't know. His death kind of hit me personally a little bit because I kind of have like a, a che- cheesy story, but it's it's true. I was four years old and I was in Louisiana. I was, grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, I was at my grandmother's house and I remember distinctly being in her driveway. And there's a fence in between her and the house next to her, like right in between the driveways. And um, ne- that lived next to her was this, there was this really big black kid named Willie, and Willie was being raised by his mother to basically hate white people. Like, his mom had some real bad stuff happen to her. She had practically every reason in the world to to just be the way she was, but she was raising him to be as bigoted as she was, and, um, you know, I, I, I remember distinctly a couple of times I hung out with my friend Brandon, who was also black, and he was my best friend in the world at the time. And we went over to Willie's, and Willie, like, we're drinking out of the hose after we're playing, like, I don't even remember what we're doing. We were playing basketball or something, you know. I'm losing horribly. I could shoot threes, though. I was shooting way outside. And he would look at me and be like, oh, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. But uh, we were getting water from the hose once, and he looks at me, and he starts drinking first. And uh, he looks at me and goes, white man shot Martin Luther King. I go first. And I was like, what? I'm four years old, folks. Four years old. I have no idea what that even means. So... Anyway, this is just, he was about six or seven, and that's just what he was being taught. So I, I distinctly remember sitting out in my grandmother's driveway playing G.I. Joe's. I don't think I played G.I. Joe's. It was probably, I think it was Ghostbusters. Anyway, I was playing with some toys in the, in the driveway, and I was singing bad. I remember singing bad. It was like, I don't even remember. It was early 87, I guess, because I was, I was probably five, I was four or four, maybe, maybe just turned four. And, um... My birthday's in November, so that would be, uh, yeah, it probably, it's probably like, like January of 87 or something like that. Anyway, we're sitting there, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm singing, bad, I'm bad, you know, and whatever. And uh, he, he comes outside and um, looks over and hears me singing the song. And he looks over at me, and he's like, you know that song? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, cool. He goes, I got the tape. You want to listen to it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. 
And then he goes in and gets his tape, and he comes around the fence and sits down and starts playing with me. And I distinctly remember.